Chapter 11, a curious celebration. Mom, yelled Caroline. Mrs. Moy looked anxiously around the dinner table. Well, I just didn't know what to say. We were talking about the coincidence of you and Wally having birthdays only a day apart. And when she invited us over for cake and ice cream, it would have seemed terribly rude to say no. Caroline is not going to kill you, said Mr. Malloy. You can have a regular celebration on Sunday, but there's no reason we can't go over to the Hatfords for an hour on Saturday and wish Wally a happy birthday. Do we have to take him a present, asked Eddie. Well, it seems the most friendly thing to do. We each have to bring him a present? No, we'll find something we can give him from the whole family. It'll be perfectly painless, I assure you. I doubt it, said Eddie. It seemed to Carolina as though the Hatfords and Malloys were destined to live overlapping lives as long as the Malloys stayed in Buckman. Whether this was bad or good, she wasn't sure, but she was sure she didn't want to share her birthday with Wally Hatford. Nevertheless, she did not want to do one single thing that might affect the play, which was being advertised as the birth of Buckman. If she insulted Wally, he might not come to rehearsals. If Wally dropped out of the play, Josh wouldn't come either. If Josh didn't come, they might not find a replacement, and if there were no Grace Grocer's Lazy Sons, the whole play might be called off. At school the next day, Caroline left Wally strictly alone, no poking him in the back, no sticking him in the arm with a pencil, no blowing on the back of his neck. She did not call him Clyde either. That evening, she saw him at the Buckman Community Players when he sat reluctantly in the back row of the theater and only went on stage when he had to. Josh, on the other hand, worked eagerly on the scenery, stopping only long enough to say his lines with Beth and went immediately back to his painting. What do you think, Caroline? Do you think Josh likes me, Beth asked as they walked home. It was hard to tell. It was obvious Josh was more interested in painting the scenery than in being in the play, but still, if he didn't like Beth, not even a little, he wouldn't hold hands with her in front of a bunch of people, would he? Of course he likes you, said Caroline. She might be only eight years old, well, almost nine, but Caroline knew perfectly well that if Beth didn't like Josh a little, she wouldn't come to rehearsals. The rehearsal had gone a little more smoothly this time. The lines said with more expression. Most of the lines were read by a narrator who was telling the story of how a grocer and farmer got together to propose the town of Buckman. The only people who hadn't seemed to be having much fun were the understudies, who would have liked to be main characters instead of townspeople. Tracy Lee had looked at Caroline as though she would be absolutely delighted if Caroline were to break a leg. The next afternoon, Saturday, the Malloys walked across the swinging bridge to the Hatford's house and knocked on the door. Mrs. Malloy had bought a computer game for Wally that he and his brothers could play, and she had also bought a gallon of French vanilla ice cream to go with the chocolate chiffon cake that Mrs. Hatford had made for the birthday party. Oh, come in, come in, Mrs. Hatford said. Wally, take their coats, will you, and put them upstairs on our bed? The Hatford boys were obviously freshly washed, combed, and brushed, and dressed, and looked thoroughly uncomfortable. Beth and Josh glanced at each other and both blushed, Caroline noticed. Don't take your eyes off those guys for a minute, Eddie warned. After what Caroline did to their brownies, you can just bet they'll have some horrible trick up their sleeves. Like mud in the ice cream or cardboard in the cake, said Caroline. Nevertheless, she was the birthday girl, and she was wearing a gorgeous yellow dress that made her look and feel like a princess, and she decided that no matter what the Hatford boys did to annoy her, she would not allow them to ruin her birthday weekend. Well, coach, said, uh, said Mr. Hatford, how do you think your team is going to size up in the playoffs? It's been a pretty good season, actually. We may never make it to the Big Ten, but we haven't done so bad in our division. Do you think you'll stay on here? I don't know yet. I guess it'll depend on what offers I get between now and the summer. I talk, the talk shifted then to Christmas season just passed, and Mr. Hatford said it had been a record year for the post office. How long have you been carrying the mail? Since I was 22, Mr. Hatford said, started out as a rural carrier. Could be a piece of cake one day that somebody's left for you and a kitten another. Folks will do that, you know. Take a mess of kittens and go around putting them in folks' mailboxes. Never know what you're going to find in the mailbox. Someone even put a skunk in there one time. The only time he came home and I wouldn't let him in the house, said Mrs. Hatford. Boys, don't you have a present for Caroline? Oh, sure, said Wally. He went upstairs and returned with a flat box wrapped in gift paper from the hardware store. The Malloys in turn handed Wally his gift. Somewhat awkwardly, Caroline and Wally both opened their gifts at the same time. 
Wally seemed very pleased with his electronic game. Dragonia, Jake and Josh said. Hey, that's a good one, Wally. Thank you, Wally said. I think I'll like it. Caroline opened her present. It was a mirror decorated with tiny ceramic dolls around the edge, each wearing a costume of a foreign country. It was such a nice present that Caroline was shocked. So you can look at yourself all day if you want, said Wally. Everyone laughed. Caroline was so pleased with the gift that she didn't mind. Well, I have coffee waiting and cake and the Malloy's ice cream. Chocolate chiffon cake too, said Josh, grinning a little at Beth. The kind you tossed in the river, added Jake, looking at Caroline. Caroline blushed furiously, but everyone seemed to take it in good humor. Watch the ice cream and the cake. I sure won't take the first bite, Eddie said. Everyone took their places. The beautiful chocolate chiffon cake in the center of the table was cut into a dozen pieces. And a large piece was distributed to each plate. Mr. Hatford took the gallon of French vanilla that the Malloys had brought and put a large scoop in the top of each piece. Then Mrs. Hatford poured coffee for the adults, pop for the kids, and everyone picked up their forks. All the Hatfords took a bite. Mr. and Mrs. Malloy took a bite. They all said how delicious it was, and Caroline saw no reason not to eat it. After all, Mrs. Hatford had cut the pieces, not the boys. Mr. Hatford had dipped the ice cream, not Jake. She took a large bite of cake and put it in her mouth. Absolutely delicious. Beth took the next bite, then Eddie, and soon surprise looks traveled between them as they all devoured their dessert and even wished there were more. This has been a lovely afternoon, Mrs. Moy said, but I'm afraid we must go. Caroline has invited some girls from school over for a little party tomorrow, so I'd better get ready. Same here, said Mr. Hufford. I promised Wally I'd take him and his brothers bowling. We're delighted that you folks could stop by. We are too. Thanks for inviting us. Wally, Jake, and Josh went upstairs and brought down all the coats. Each of the three boys helped one of the girls on with her parka, and they were all so polite that for once, even Eddie was speechless. As soon as they got out of the, on the porch, Beth said, I can't believe how nice they were. A sharp wind from the north caught them full in the face, and the three girls yanked up the hoods on their jackets. Rat-a-tat-tat, ping-pong, pop, bap. Showers of something small and hard rained down on the floor of the porch, cupfuls of something that hadn't been nestled in their hoods. What in the world, said Mrs. Malloy, turning to stare. Lima beans, yelled the girls all together. And as they walked out to the street, they saw the boys waving at them from their upstairs window. Chapter 12, P.S. Dear Bill and Annie, Steve, Tony, and Doug, we got even with the girls. Mom did the dumbest thing. She invited the boys over for cake and ice cream just because my birthday and Caroline's are on one day apart. Did you ever hear anything so dumb? If the county did a dog, pat, dog catcher had a birthday next to mine, would anybody think to invite him? We not only had to share our cake, but we had to be nice and polite too. We even had to carry their coats upstairs. Well, we were nice, all right. We gave them all our lima beans. I mean, all. Jake found a package in the cupboard and we poured lima beans into the hoods of the girls' jackets. When they started home and flipped up their hoods, they got a shower of lima beans. I'm sick of winter. You want our snow? You can have it. I'm sick of school too. I'm sick of being nice to Caroline. Please come back, Wally. Dear Wally and Jake and Josh and Peter. Hey, don't feel so bad. It isn't so great down here either. Yeah, we'll take your snow. Not only was there no snow at Christmas, there wasn't any snow at all. There will never be any snow here in Georgia. Number two, dad still hasn't made up his mind whether we're moving back or staying here. I think the worst thing of all is not knowing where we'll be. Number three, I had a cavity and I hate the dentist down here. He doesn't believe in Novocaine. Number four, you remember that really cool teacher here in school, that Georgia Peach? She's getting married and she left right after Christmas. If we come back and find that the Wombird, the Weirdo, and the Crazy have put ballerina wallpaper in our rooms, we will barf. Bill. <laughs>